spent the last 10 months working on the, this campaign. And we know the momentum is building, and it's building on our side. This week, a poll came out showing just how close the race for Secretary of State is. I am now tied with Chris Kobach. But <laughs> the race is far from over, and our work is far from done. Last week, as was mentioned, we celebrated the anniversary of the 19th Amendment that secured a woman's right to vote. It took the work of leaders in every community across the entire nation to fight to secure our right our right to vote and participate in our government. Women don't just think about ourselves when we make decisions. We think about our children, our parents, and our communities. Our grandmothers knew the importance of women being engaged in the political process, and they fought so our voices would be heard. And tonight I thought, it would be nice to wear a little something of my grandmother, so I wore her brooch right here. But what were they fighting for 100 years ago? What was so important to these leaders that they dedicated their energy to overcome? It's been said, it was suppression, suppression pure and simple. Voting is something that too many of us take for granted. We have many opportunities to vote, many times for offices or candidates that we don't know much about. But voting is what allows us to participate in the system in which we live our lives. It is the action that makes us be able to stand up for our beliefs and be heard. Voting is how we protect ourselves, our families, our children, and our future. Voting is more than checking a box on a piece of paper. It is about our right to determine our personal safety and security. 94 years ago, women like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton knew that, and they fought with all of their might to do that. And in Kansas, if you can believe it, even now, the fight to protect our right to vote is still alive today. Let me read you a quote that has stuck with me. And I quote, I can't imagine how many widows are voting for their dead husbands in communities like I lived in. Yes, it happens all the time. These words were not spoken by some misogynist from 100 years ago. They were spoken in April of this year by Chris Kobach the current Secretary of State, when asked about the most common form of voter fraud. Yeah, Chris Kobach says, women voting for their dead husbands happens all the time. There is a war on women that is being waged in Kansas today. The current Secretary of State, Chris Kobach, has developed an extremist personal agenda that has set all of us in his sights. He has presented policy that has endangered our constitutional rights and has already pulled the trigger. 
Kobach is waging a war on voting and a war on women and senior citizens. And right now in Kansas, there are nearly 20,000 of our friends, family, and neighbors who have been denied their right to vote. This isn't the American way. And this isn't the Kansas way either. But still, many Kansans do not understand what Kobach's agenda looks like in practice. And that's why the story of the 92-year-old grandmother, Evelyn Howard, is such a good example. Born in Minnesota and a lifelong Missouri voter, Evelyn recently moved to Kansas and tried to register to vote. That's when Chris Kobach got in her way. Because Ms. Howard was born at a midwife's house and not in a hospital, a birth certificate was never issued. As a result, Ms. Howard could not satisfy the strict proof of citizenship requirements put into place by Chris Kobach, joining the almost 20,000 people of Kansans who have had their voting rights put in suspense. It took an appeal to the state election board, a family Bible, and census records for Ms. Howard to be declared eligible to vote. It also took action from Chris Kobach as he sits on the state election board and ultimately approved restoration of Ms. Howard's voting rights. And so this story shows us two things. It is easy to get caught up in Chris Kobach's voting red tape. Many people living in Kansas have no birth certificate or can't afford to get one from out of state. The process for overcoming such a deficiency is cumbersome, expensive, and time consuming. But number two, Chris Kobach has the ability to get people off that suspended list. While not an efficient solution, Chris Kobach could be working for the people of Kansas, like Evelyn, to verify their citizenship and restore their voting rights. Instead, though, Kobach spends his time pursuing anti-immigration legislation and litigation out of state. We now know that Chris Kobach has refused his, to do his job from day one, working instead to make it harder for Kansans to vote and using his office for partisan gain. Kansas deserves better. <laughs> there is a war on women that is being waged in Kansas today. Fifty years ago, the 24th Amendment banning poll taxes became law in the United States. It says the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied by reason of failure to pay any poll tax or other tax. What is a tax? We know about taxes we have to pay every year. And just this week, I released my tax returns to the public. <laughs> So now everyone knows what my taxes look like. But the dictionary defines a tax as a strain or heavy demand, a burden, a pressure, a, a pressure, an imposition. How much of an imposition, a burden, a pressure is put upon all of the women to provide documentation to prove our names when they have been changed from what is listed on our birth certificate or passports? How much of an imposition and burden is it to find or pay for all these documents? The requirement to do this is a modern day poll tax for women. It's not just something from the Jim Crow era from long ago. 
This is happening today to all of us, Democratic, Republican, and independent women, all of us. The current implementation of the law by Chris Kobach is aimed at restricting our right to vote. He isn't securing our elections, he is suppressing our freedom. He is targeting women like you and me to keep us from speaking out. There is a war on women that is being waged in Kansas today. I've been talking to people over, all over the state and I keep hearing the same thing. We've heard it before this evening. I'm sure you've heard it and everyone is sick and tired of waiting. We are tired of waiting for Chris Kobach to do something that doesn't make us feel embarrassed to be Kansans. <laughs> we want to be able to go through a day where we don't feel like we have been cheated out of our rights. We've been waiting nearly four years for this to happen and we're still waiting. Do you want to end the disappointment that we all feel day after day? Yes. Do you want to restore common sense to Topeka? Yes. Do you want to make sure that every eligible citizen can exercise their right to vote? Yes. If you do, then it is time for the waiting to come to an end. It is time to bring fairness, and pride back home. It's time to end this disappointment and to restore the pride in our voices when we call ourselves Kansans. Yes. But make no mistake, Kansas is under attack. Our grandmothers fought for our right to vote, and now the torch has been passed to us. We have been dragged down for long enough, and it's time to stand back up. We can stop all of this now. Tens of thousands of people around the state have recognized the problem. We've come a long way since the beginning of my campaign to restore common sense to Topeka, but we're not there yet. We've seen the problems, and I've presented the solutions, but I need your help. This race is far from over. The work is far from done. And I need you to tell your friends that it's time for a change for Kansas. I need you to work every day until November 4th, helping out wherever and whenever you can, and get ready for the change. I need you to get to the polls this fall when we will send the message that we will wait no more. We will sweep Topeka clean and bring about the change and take back Kansas. I'm Jean Curtis Schodorf, your next Secretary of State. <laughs>